Good morning, folks. Today we're going over the latest exciting official what they teach in school solar science. Some cosmology and climate coming as well as we start with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the sun's patchy and shifting coronal hole presentation in the central heliographic longitudes, while those bright areas enter from the top left. These do not appear to have any considerable sunspots beneath them, and the major motions are contained wholly within the corona. Fairly solid bit of slow field evolution, but not much else. Quickly looking at the solar wind, got both Discover and Ace on here because Ace doesn't have that ridiculous error spike from about three or four hours ago, but even with it, you can tell on both charts the plasma speed took its ride to the top of the hill as the coronal hole stream began impacting overnight, but did so weakly with only moderate speed and density to the plasma stream. The weak impact hasn't really done a lot to the planet's geomagnetism. We've still got every corner of weather extremes around the world from record heat in winter to new snow records at the same latitude but on the other side of the world. So. Let's jump right into commentary on climate battles from the top science publication on Earth, but on the wins and losses they've had in climate courtrooms and making sure to discuss nothing of scientific value whatsoever. Certainly not any of the upcoming changes to climate models or the revolution in our understanding of the sun. More on that coming at the end of the show, but they do however include the step-by-step -step how to guide to bring climate lawsuits. Any bored lawyers out there, if there is such a thing, Maybe there should be the other side version of this, or at least some bullet points of where to begin. Up next, I can clearly remember the pushback on the preventative measures taken before the Carlton Complex fires. I remember the protests and screams as they lit the prescribed burns. Turns out, they helped, in a big way. These would be the same types of policies that the populace overruled in Australia in the years leading up to this recent season's atrocious blaze. Up next, Two links to simultaneous press releases from the team studying tiny particles and hoping to answer very big questions. It turns out the neutron is even better neutralized than they thought. One of the best hypotheses for the existence of matter in the universe, as opposed to antimatter or the complete cancellation of matter, was the electric dipole moment of the neutron, which they must now completely scrub in favor of some alternative. I'm not sure humans can really answer that greater question at this point. Not sure why they thought relying on the electromagnetism of a neutron was their top hypothesis in the first place before today, just things are a-changing. Up next, we're with NASA hoping to send a dragonfly to Titan, Saturn's largest moon. Their lander would have the ability to spectrally image the ground on which it lands and then also drill into the subsurface water ice and characterize the chemical composition at various layers along the way. Then, it simply flies off to do it at another location, by the way, I'm very big on the Jovian and Saturnian moon missions and do hope for the best for this one too. Last but not least, although the publication date reads December 2019, me and just about everyone else had to wait until now to get the hard copies in our hands. I got my copy of the latest in space weather science textbooks yesterday, and I did indeed get through the work. Now, I will admit, I sort of skimmed chapters 1, 3, 4, and 5 as it was repeat information, and even would be for most of you who have paid close attention to these daily shows over the years. But at the end of the book, they drove home some key points, and I'd love to share them with you. We have made them here and in detail in our upcoming book this summer, but which we can now say are official enough that they are being taught by the top textbooks distributed globally at the university level. First. Yes, our sun can superflare. While the greatest we really know of was in 1859 and would throw modern global power grids into disarray if it happened again today, and which is likely to occur about every 200 years, the sun can go bigger. One about 10 times stronger is likely to occur every 500 to 600 years, and every 4,000 to 5,000 years, we'd get something 100 times stronger than the 1859 solar storm. Either of those options sends us back to medieval times overnight, and right as I was just about salivating over what appeared to be their missing body of work on even stronger solar events, their last line in chapter 7 discusses how their estimates are lower than what is calculated based on a significant paper from 2012. A little nod to the truth, but a long way to go, and a lot riding on our book this summer to pick up where the last line of their chapter 7 left off here. And then we finally come back to climate. On page 13 of chapter 8, they briefly discuss how these solar particles are now going into the climate models. 
for the first time. It was also a very clear but quick nod and open-ended mention of the future. For those keeping track, that's now the American Geophysical Union, NASA, the top five universities on Earth, and here, the American Astronomical Society, very clearly noticing that the UN has opened the door to the sun for climate change. Folks, we'll discuss this today on our podcast over at suspiciousobservers.org, unless, of course, baby Adam has just spectacular timing on his world entry. We'll also be discussing that 1859 solar storm setting off the modern magnetic excursion. And because the podcast is on the website where we go further than we do here on YouTube, we are going to discuss our thoughts on the coronavirus. Now, no, we won't be pretending to be doctors, but don't forget, Stifle those stay-in-your-lane comments. I did put a new chemical through the FDA, and I am credited with discovering its mechanism of action as a cationic biomimetic antimicrobial peptide, and the company's two subsequent approvals followed roadmaps I wrote, so we're not exactly going to be out of our element either. I don't plan to member-protect the podcast this week, so feel free to head over there in a couple of hours. It will be the February 29th episode coming later today when it posts. Website members, we've got deeper look episodes to catch up with if you haven't in a bit. We greatly appreciate your support, and we've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. Of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.